My goodness, it's been a minute since I've cracked the mic here on Geek Therapy Radio. Uh, an idea that just popped in my head, which I'm going to tell you right now, is that I would give my metaphorical left nut to have Reaper on Android. But let's talk about my experience so far with the Gigabyte Aorus 17H and some other geeky stuff. Let's get into it. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. My name is Johnny Hamburger. I'm your mental curator. I don't know why I started the show off with that kind of weird intro. It's because my phone is going off. It goes off non-freaking stop this thing. By the way, this is the Galaxy uh, Samsung Galaxy Fold 4, uh, Z Fold 4, and it is wonderful. I absolutely love it. I don't have my controller up here. I was going to show you it in its... Uh, uh, cradle and it's an absolute gem for uh, for emulation for especially for retro emulation and gaming because game systems like the PS2 not only run awesome through here with Aether Aether SX2 which by the way don't update Aether if you can uh, avoid it there's some turmoil going on with the coding and the developing uh, developers of Aether SX2 and uh, last I saw I have not checked up on this in a, in a couple weeks, but last I saw the main coder, when he left, he kind of semi-sabotaged it a little bit. Now it includes like ads and things and technically runs a little bit slower. I don't ever remember this ad banner being there. Maybe it was there, but now it definitely is. Uh, but anyways, Aether SX2 um, and the Galaxy Fold 4 run PS2 emulation perfectly, and PS2 is natively most games at, you know, at most games are in a four by three aspect ratio. So here you see on the camera here, I've got uh, Gran Turismo 4 loading up and uh, it just looks amazing. Are you picking up all these fingerprints and stuff on the camera? Maybe you are, but yeah, it's just gorgeous. It's such a perfect aspect ratio phone slash miniature tablet for playing four by three retro games. Uh, I'm going to close Aether SX2 here because that's not the point of the podcast, really. I just want to throw that tidbit out there that uh, I am, I have been rocking the Z Fold 4 for several weeks now, and it has been just amazing. But it goes off all the time. It goes off all the freaking time, and that's why I haven't been able to record many uh, pod Geek Therapy Radio podcasts as of late, because the last few weeks have just been insane and i'm sure i'm not the only one who's experienced that i'm sure lots of you out there have had really busy weeks uh busy months uh over the end of um winter and into spring uh mine has been no different it's been just absolutely non-stop road trips to florida uh i th i herniated my disc in my lower lumbar it actually uh the jelly donut that is between your vertebrae your your spinal disc mine burst and the little fluid inside that jelly donut came out and was pressing up against my sciatic nerve, causing me pain that caused me to scream and reckon with God himself at how much pain I was experiencing, especially those first few days after uh, popping it. I'm still not completely out of the woods. I, I feel well enough to sit in my uh, chair here and record a podcast the keen eyed among you can maybe see, you know, I have a new chair. I finally got a new gaming chair. Gaming chair is kind of a high board. It's just an ergonomic uh, chair uh, by Dowinx, D O W I N X. And it uh, has lumbar support and this neck support. I am not trying to sell you on it at all, but uh, yeah, I decided after my, <laughs> the disc exploded in my lumbar. I need to take better care of my back. And one of the things I realized is that, I mean, obviously I've been sitting at a desk for the past, I don't know, maybe 15 years, almost 15 years straight, you know, working in the radio, working at iHeart Radio. Uh, I ran the board for uh, 740 KTRH for since 2009 until 2021, uh, full time since 2013. So that was almost eight or nine years at least of full-time 40 hours a week minimum 
hunched over the radio console. There was no way to run the radio console in an ergonomic position. It was just impossible. The controls are just way too far away, and what you need is just all over the place. So you had to stay hunched in a high chair over the radio console, and that is absolutely horrible for your back, and that's basically the position I was in from 2009 to 2021, and uh, yeah, I'm paying for it. And I realized that when I was coming up to my studio here, the man cave, the geek cave here, uh, that I dreaded sitting down in the chair that I was using. It was just a regular old office chair with very little support, and it kind of dawned on me. Hey, you shouldn't dread the chair that you're about to go spend a lot of time in. So that was a good trigger for me, a good reminder to me. You know what? I'm going to invest a little bit of money. I think this chair was under, I want to say it was under $300. It was around $300. Uh, but it was a good investment in my back. And like I said, I'm not completely out of the woods yet. I am in like weeks five or six. And they say typically it takes six to eight weeks for the, a back injury like this to, to heal up enough to, to where you're not in constant pain. Um, I'm at that dangerous kind of point now in my lower back injury recovery where the pain, it's always there, but it's not... Uh, that bad and it can create this kind of false sense of security meaning that I'm more likely to overextend myself or not take breaks or pick up heavy things when normally I wouldn't like if your back really hurts you're not going to do those things but since my back is in that kind of limbo process limbo area where it's not hurting that badly I got to be careful not to get uh, too overly confident and re-injure because it sucks Uh, this last back injury I was just basically in bed for 23 hours of the day for a good solid two weeks. I feel so bad for my wife. It was absolutely morally heartbreaking to be a husband and father and be that incapacitated for that amount of time. Uh, I love Sarah with all my heart. I love Riker with all my heart. Sarah worked so hard while I was just out of it completely laying on my back. I felt so terrible just emotionally not being able to do the things that I would normally do and you might be thinking as we end this segment here I want to talk about more things including my new laptop 1700 my 17h aor 17h here what I like and don't like about it but on the way into the segment here you might be wondering how did you blow your back out Johnny did you do something cool at the museum did you go up in the vomit comet did you jump off a cliff did you wrestle with some great white sharks while you're in Florida no I blew my back out by sneezing I was filming a little B-roll of some coffee video that I'm about to make for the museum, which is going to be really cool, but I was hunched over filming some B-roll and sneezed and felt a little pop in my back, and that was it. (sighs) More Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Just a quick reminder of the plugs. You can find Geek Therapy Radio across all social media and YouTube. Uh, and wherever you listen to podcasts, of course, the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, whatever. All social media, all YouTube, all that stuff. Just search for Geek Therapy Radio Podcast. Look for the red, white, and black color scheme no matter where you find it, and that's how you know that you've got Geek Therapy Radio and your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. You can also email me directly, Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y, at geektherapyradio.com. Or you can just go to geektherapyradio.com. The very first thing you see is a form that you can contact me with. Again, it does not sign you up for anything. It does not bombard your email with with spam or anything like that. It's literally, it just literally dings my phone that I've had an interaction on my website. It goes like right to my email and it does not sign you up for a dang thing. I'm the world's worst uh, salesman. Like I have not pitched my show. I don't, I'm not ruthless with my show. I don't constantly ask people to be slamming the subscribe button. I do ask you to subscribe from time to time, but I just don't, I don't pitch it 
as much as maybe I should have. You see these other content creators just really leaning into the call to actions to you know subscribe and like and comment and share with friends and then go to their website and sign up for newsletters and mailing list and here's my shop and here's my Patreon. I don't do that. I it, it's not there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just I I I guess I don't have that killer instinct to try to take over the world with this podcast or my YouTube channel. So uh, if you like what I do, that would be awesome if you'd consider subscribing because there's just so much content out there that I know even asking for a subscription is, is crazy. I just appreciate the consideration. And if you wanted to interact with the algorithm, sure, go for it. The comments, the likes, even the dislikes <laughs> helps with the algorithm. Uh, not that I want you to necessarily dislike, but Anyways, here's a call to action. Here's a call to action that I actually haven't done in a long time. If you are listening to Geek Therapy Radio Podcast on any podcast app that supports this feature, uh, if you could put a, a star rating, you know, whatever you think it is. If you think it's a one star, go for a one star, whatever. If you think it's five stars, four stars, just do a, a star rating if there is such a thing in the app that you're listening to this with. That'd be awesome. Uh, also, apps that are podcast apps that allow you to write little reviews, like Apple Podcasts lets you write reviews of the little reviews of the podcast. That'd be cool, too. I mean, you don't have to do it. And at the end of the day, it's not, I mean, I'm not trying to make a million dollars off this, so... It, I hate this phrase. It is what it is. But if you are feeling so inclined to, you know, leave a note or leave a star rating in whatever podcast app you're listening to this right now with, that'd be cool. I mean, that would for sure be appreciated. But, uh, you know, do or don't. I'm just a podcast host. I'm not a cop. So do whatever you want in that regard. All right. Back to the meat and potatoes of the uh, podcast, or at least this segment. The last episode I touched on, I, I touched on for a long time, the new laptop that I bought. I bought, to keep long story short, the Gigabyte Aorus 17H. That's what I'm using to record this podcast with. That's what I'm running OBS on at the same time. I have it in the power saving profile, by the way, to do all this multitasking. Uh, but yeah, I've got the Aorus 17H. And, and originally, I wanted the uh, Asus G18. I had bought it through Best Buy Several days later, Best Buy came back and said they gave me my money back and said there was a problem processing payment, which doesn't make any sense because they had my money for several days. They already had it. They already deducted it from my account. It was already in their hands. They came back. Oh, there's some payment problem. We can't you, We can't accept it. We can't send you out. Whatever. I went with the Aorus Gigabyte 17H and the Gigabyte Aorus 17H, and I could not be happier. Let me do some fancy footwork here in OBS and change my camera over to a scene that's called Main Cam and Web. And oh, I've got this website up. I was going to talk about that. I'll talk about that in a minute. But all right, I've got the Gigabyte AOR 17H brought up here. Hopefully everything's still working in the OBS here. But let me, let's me let just talk about this a little bit. Let's go over the specs just real quick. My particular variant, of course, has Windows 11, but it is the 13th Gen i7 uh, 13700H that uh, peaks up to 5 gigahertz, 24 megabyte cache, uh, 6 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, and I do have the RTX 4080 laptop GTU, GPU with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 uh, RAM, and the most important thing about that is that the GDP, the maximum power, goes up to 150 watts. I have seen on my hardware info, which I don't have routed through OBS at the moment. I have seen my art, my laptop, my mobile RTX 4080 that is rated for 150 watts peak just over 160 watts in certain boost situations. Uh, but that's a good sign that the advertised power spec for the GPU in this laptop, it does actually achieve that and more. Big time kudos to Gigabyte for uh, making that happen. Uh, I have installed uh, since I've got it. It came with 16 gigabytes of GDDR, f or uh, it came with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Uh, I have since upgraded that to two 32 gig sticks, so I'm running the full maximum supported 64 gigabytes of DDR5. I think it's at 4800 megahertz. Let me bring up. You won't see this because it's not routed through OBS, but let me bring up my uh, system performance here. Click on memory, and it is running at 4800 uh, megahertz. So that checks out. Um, I have since installed an addition. There's two NVMe slots uh, in the extra NVMe slot. I have installed a four terabyte 
NVMe SSD. And depending on when you're listening to this, if prices of solid state drives have gone back up, as of recording in spring of 2023, solid state prices have absolutely plummeted. I got this four terabyte uh, NVMe fourth gen, gen four drive for under $200. Four terabyte, under $200. Four terabytes, under $200. As of recording, you can get two terabyte drives a, you know, a two terabyte drive for under $90. You can get one terabyte NVMEs for under $60. I've seen sometimes under $50. It's a, if you're thinking about buying solid state storage and you're listening to this anywhere around spring 2023 or whenever you're listening and prices are still bottomed out, I'm just saying right now, spring 2023 is the time to stock up on uh, solid state drives. Uh, so other specs here, you know, the IO isn't, I wouldn't call it fantastic. It is perfectly suitable. There's one Thunderbolt 4 port. There's two USB 3.2, uh, ports. Uh, there's a display port where I, there's a display port and HDMI and that display port should 100%. There's one of my critiques about this machine. There's, there's not too many, but this is one of them. That display port should have been another USB-C port. It is mind-boggling the decisions that laptop makers make sometimes uh, in what in their in their port choice. We won't even talk about Apple right now, but just the 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 port choices that these manufacturers make. You know, they they have every opportunity to to make it perfect, to make the perfect decision in in a given uh, kind of scenario. Can I zoom in on this thing? Uh, I can't tell what I'm looking at here. What's that? The right side. So there's a Thunderbolt port there. There's a USB, uh, the, pow- the, the power barrel. Um, oh, what's this over here? Is that a headphone jack? Let me... Gosh, it's so dark in here. Yeah, that's the combo headphone microphone jack. Uh, on the left side is what I'm talking about. This... So you see there's the uh, RJ45 Ethernet input, which is amazing. Let me check my Reaper here, how much time I got left in this segment. That's good. Uh, so you see over here on the left side got more exhaust there's exhaust all over the place there's heat sinks everywhere uh but you got the ethernet port you have the hdmi 2.1 whatever the highest spec is right now then you have this display port out which should have been a usb type c because usb type c will carry display ports so why not just give us a usb type c on this that's it's one of those mind-boggling decisions mind-boggling decisions why they did that Whatever. That's not even the worst part of this laptop. And again, there's not a lot bad with this laptop. Really, there's not. But there, the other mind-boggling uh, design decision... Uh, let me check my Reaper here. Yeah, we're getting to the end segment. Let me tell you the other mind-boggling design, design decision that uh, Gigabyte made on this laptop. Uh, more Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. I was talking about my new laptop that I purchased, uh, the Gigabyte Aorus 17H. I've already gone over the specs. You can go, if you're listening to the uh, radio broadcast version on uh, KPRC 950 AM right now, you can listen to the Geek Therapy Radio podcast in your favorite podcast app. Just search for Geek Therapy Radio podcast. Look for the red, white, and black color scheme, and then you've got me. So, I've been going over the specs and kind of pet peeves. And one of the pet peeves I just went over was that there's a display port on here that really should be Type-C. <laughs> just an ambiguous Type-C port that can connect all sorts of peripherals to, because Type-C carries display port anyways. So, why use that space for just a display port that can only be a display port when you could put a Type-C port that can also function as that as a display port? Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. You could have put another hub in there, USB Type-C hub in there, and gotten all the extra display ports and, 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 and USBs and even VGA output, all sorts of stuff that you could use that port with, but no, now it's a display port. Yes, I know you can go display port to VGA for those of us who still have a CRT monitor laying around. Uh, anyways, so that was the one mind-boggling design choice. And again, if you're just joining me here on Geek Therapy Radio, I love the AOR 17H. 
but there's no such thing as just the perfect device that the designers got every decision right on. There are just these mind-boggling omissions, these mind-boggling choices that they make. So the display port, that should have been the Type-C port, that's one thing. Here's the biggie. Here is the absolute asinine, wildly inappropriate, horrible decision that Gigabyte made with the 17H. Everything else is 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 a uh, dismissible, like that Display Port USB thing. That's kind of dismissible because you do have a Thunderbolt 4 port on the other side that does accept power delivery. By the way, up to 100 watts. The one egregious design choice is that. The keyboard, let me, if can I bring up a, key, a kind of an image of the keyboard? The keyboard's awesome. Um, it, uh, I'm going to download this to do, to do maybe a high res, show you a high res uh, image of the, oh, I can't show because I don't have a router through IBS. Let me just tell you about the keyboard. Because you, you're listening to the podcast, you may not be watching this on YouTube. Keyboard, individual key RGB, it's it's amazing. It, it looks amazing as far as the RGB. Uh, typing on it takes a little bit of getting used to. I find myself uh, doing some misjokes every now and then, but that's not the biggest knock on... Uh, that's not a huge knock because it takes there's a little learning curve to any new device you're going to use for your for your main uh, daily driver. Uh, now that I've in OBS and I pulled it up <laughs> on a OBS, I can show you what I'm talking about with the keyboard here. All right, so the RGB everything. What do you notice on the keyboard if you look closely? And I wish I could zoom in on this. Oh, there we go. That's yeah, that's kind of better. Here we go. Yep, 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 yep. All right, look. Everything's lit up on here. Look at the function keys, though. Look at any key that has a different function to it, a, a shift or a function to the key. None of the shift or function functions are backlit. That is ridiculous. Why not make everything printed on the key backlit? That means that as good as the backlit keyboard is, if you are in the dark, you simply cannot see unless you've committed to memory what the functions is what the functions are so for instance if you want to turn up the volume every single time i got to go here hit function and choose um f8 is the down volume and f9 is the up volume f7 is mute that is not backlit that is never lit up by the backlight it's ridiculous how did that get through? How did that make it to production? It is such a stupid design choice. It is such an oversight not to have the backlit keyboard backlight everything, every function of the key. Again, the F7, which is mute. You don't see the mute icon under the backlight. It's not lit up. It's just dark. It is just printed on the on the uh, key there. There's no backlight underneath that. So if you press the function button and then function F8, function F7, whatever, you can't see what that function is. It's ridiculous. I I don't understand the mind of the designers who let that slip and go out the door. I, I mean, it's I it yeah. I mean, if anything, that's what kind of proves how great this laptop is, is there's really no such thing as as a device that can be so perfect. Like usually if something is just perfect, 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 that means there's something there's got to be at least one thing that's just mind blowingly stupid about it. And for the AOR 17H, the, the, the backlit keyboard looks gorgeous, but the functions of the function keys and some of the shifts are not backlit. Which means if you're in the dark or a low light situation, you cannot see. You have to get out of your phone flashlight and see what the function of that friggin' key is because they're not backlit. Ridiculous. Let's talk about the screen a little bit. I wanted to, in the last broadcast podcast, I, I, I talked about this uh, a little bit. So let me go back here. Let me make sure OBS is on the right scene. Uh, by the way, this is the webcam. If you're looking, watching on YouTube, this is the Aero 17H webcam. Uh, so let's go back to the main cam and web scene. All right, so we're looking at the 17H here. Let's take a little gander at the screen. Let me, what, a, okay. I just sold my soul to Gigabyte to get the cookie reminder out of there. So the screen here, this is a 360 hertz, 17.3 inch, uh, 1920 by 1080 screen. It's a 1080 screen. I'll repeat that again. It's not a 1440. It's not 4K. 
it is 1080. It's a 17.3 inch 1080 360 hertz screen, which tells you everything in the world about how, as far as a gaming laptop, who is this marketed towards? It's marketed towards esports. 100 percent 360 hertz. There's no if ands or buts about it. 360 hertz. That's marketed towards esports. That's marketed towards your Rocket Leaguers, your CS goers, and any other esport you have. It's the high refresh rate is esport territory. Now, I. You might be puzzled. 17.3 inches, 1080. You must be pixel seeing all these pixels popping up. Like, no, it actually the screen looks amazing. It looks wonderful. You would you would kind of you'd be hard pressed to sit back at a normal kind of working distance and look at the screen here on the 17 H and think it wasn't it wasn't 1440. If you might think it's 4K even. Here's why. There's a lot of detractors on on uh, desktop replacement laptops. A lot of detractors who might say that 17 by by this time that desktop replacement should all be 1440, at least 1440 if not 4K. That's not necessarily true. Maybe I'm going against the grain with my opinion here, but that's not necessarily the difference between a 4K screen, just my opinion, and bear in mind how thick my Coke bottle glasses are here. Let me change the scene in OBS so you can see how thick my glasses are here. Look at these things. Maybe I'm not, maybe perhaps I'm not the best to be talking about screen resolution. But you think somebody with bad eyes would definitely benefit from viewing a 4K screen than a 1080 screen. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm getting at. A 17-inch screen on a laptop, even though it's a big laptop, is still just a 17-inch screen. So, when you're looking at it from about two feet away, you're working on it, 1080, 1080p, you can't see pixels. I mean, really, I know my eyes are bad, but you can't see pixels. It's, it's perfectly crisp and sharp. 1080 on a 17-inch screen, 1080p resolution, 1920 by 1080 pixels per square inch on a screen is is very sharp on 17 inches so a better visual visualization would be this picture that you just built your dream pc a big tower pc whatever you got all the liquid cooling going through there whatever now you're picking out your monitor maybe a curved monitor maybe whatever uh, you're gonna get a 32 inch monitor you're gonna be a baller status to get like a 43 inch you know uh OLED or whatever I have. I'm using, I use OLED just as my main screen too, but uh, whatever. You're going to get a, a screen to complete your desktop build. If you got a 17 inch screen to complete your desktop build, first of all, you're out of your mind. <laughs> There's no reason to, to, de to build a baller PC and then go build, you know, get a 17 inch screen for your main display. I would say in 2023, a minimum is going to be 19 inches, 20 inches. And even that's small for a desktop. If you're at work looking at your computer screen at work, there's no friggin' way it's a 17 inch 16 by nine or 16 by 10 screen. There's just no way. 17 inch is a small screen and 1080p on a 17 inch screen is more than perfect for what you need uh, because the screen is so small 4k on a small screen doesn't serve any purpose like there's you know 13 inch laptops 14 inch laptops some of them say 4k screen like it's such a small display you couldn't see the pixels at 1080 let alone 4k it's gonna look the same so all i'm saying is in my opinion here the screen on the 17h the AORS, the Gigabyte AOR 17H, 1080p, 360 hertz. The decision to go with the 1080 screen here, it's 16 by 9, by the way. Uh, the decision to go with 360 hertz and, and the 1080p resolution is fine. It's fine. It is not a detractor. One of the, th another reason why is another reason why people use uh, de these desktop replacements, and I can hear the bump music playing, so. Uh, I'll continue this in the next segment. You're listening to Geek Therapy Radio. Don't go anywhere. Luckily, it was a short break. We're back. You're listening to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger. I am recording this for YouTube, so you can go check that out whenever I upload it to YouTube. Geek Therapy Radio podcast on YouTube. Uh, just type it into the search bar and you'll find it up there. 
I've been talking about my laptop, my Gigabyte Aor uh, 17H that has a Core i7 13700H, 5 gigahertz, 6 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, and an RTX 4080, uh, which is really a desktop 4070, but we won't open that can of worms. We've already opened it in past episodes of Geek Therapy Radio. Uh, but I'm talking about the screen. So, to, to finish my thought from the last segment, one of the reasons why people get a desktop replacement class laptop, which is any desk, any laptop I'd say over 16 inches, but definitely 17.3 inches is definitely desktop replacement. 18 inches is definitely desktop replacement. One of the reasons why they get it is just for that purpose. It's, it's not called desktop replacement for no reason. This is what they're using to replace their big bulky tower uh, desktop PC. And in that use case scenario, what people do a lot of the times, if not most of the time, I'm doing it here too, is you are using, uh, you're plugging in an external monitor. So you've got the 17.3 inch screen. In this case, it's uh, 1080p, which is perfectly fine for 17.3 inches. But I've got it going out to my giant 48 inch, giant, quote unquote, it's giant because it's two, three feet away from my face, uh, 4K OLED screen here. Why am I blanking out on the manufacturer of it? LG. It's an LG OLED, 48 inches, 4K HDR. It looks amazing. And that's one that's a that's a very typical use case for a desktop replacement laptop is you're going out of the HDMI or display port to a much bigger screen. So now you have two screens. You're, it's a dual screen setup here, 17.3 inch screen from the laptop, and it's going out to a usually bigger screen, 20 at least 20 inches, 22 inches, 25 inches, 27 inches, 32 inches, 34 inches. 42 inches, 48, no matter what size your your uh, main PC screen is, that's when it matters. When it's a bigger screen, especially if it's closer to your face, when it's a bigger screen, that's when resolution matters. That's when, yeah, you'd want 4K. You would notice 10... I would notice a 1080p image on my 48-inch OLED right here in front of my face. I could, would tell you definitely, even with my terrible eyes, that's a 1080p uh, input source right there because when it's that big and that close to your face you're going to definitely notice the difference between 4k and 1080p but if it's on a 17 inch screen 17.3 inch screen you're you'll be hard pressed to tell the dif difference between 4k and a 1080p screen or 1440p for that matter oh my goodness uh where do i go from there so that's the 1700h i've told you all about it uh, that is, that's the story with that. Uh, we can move on to other kind of geeky stuff. I saw recently, I won't talk about this for too long, but Doug DeMuro did a video for Cars and Bids selling Hoovy's uh, 2008 Audi S5 with a six-speed manual transmission. Basically, Hoovy and Doug DeMuro have hyped up that era of uh, Audi S5. I still have my 2010 Audi S5. Six-speed manual transmission, same 4.2-liter uh, V8, derived from the uh, Audi R8, and not the uh, a lower. There's so the 4.2-liter engine. Apparently, not to get too pedantic with this, it can either be uh, what's using the old S4, which has like time chain issues, and da 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 da. The one in the Audi S5, 2008 and onward, is from the Audi R8. So the S5, 2008 S5 through 2012 S5, that's when you had the 4.2 liter V8. That 4.2 liter V8 is from the Audi R8. It is just obviously detuned down to 354 horsepower uh, from I think in the R8 around the same time period is around 420 horsepower. Uh, whatever. Hoovy and Doug DeMuro hyped the car that I have and is technically uh, for sale. I'm not trying to pitch it to anybody listening to this, but I do have it. And it's cool that some of the top uh, automotive YouTubers on the planet, journalists on the planet, are starting to hype up the 2008 to 2012 Audi S5. After 2012, uh, Audi, the S5 went to the uh, supercharged uh, three liter uh, V6, also a peach of an engine, but it was 2013 marked the end of the naturally aspirated V8, as God intended, in the uh, Audi S5. Other bit of news, I have just been so busy. Oh, I want to tell you about this. So, I'll, I'll pull it up here on my uh, Galaxy Z Fold. 
you've noticed those of you who you know listen to me regularly notice that I haven't put out like a ton of content in the past kind of few months just been just been loaded up with work responsibilities and everything but I wanted a way that I could record and get out some quick podcasts and I'm going to call them these aren't for broadcast these are just kind of quick podcasts that I'd put out there just directly upload to podcast they would never uh, make the air uh, I wanted a way to do that quickly and I'm using an app on Android called Audio Evolution, which is the most kind of in-depth, I'm showing it on the camera here, Audio Evolution, uh, it's the most in-depth kind of DAW, digital audio workstation that you can get on Android, which means that it it's so in-depth that it can be frustrating, <laughs> a tr- just kind of truth be told, but I've already set up a template here with, the, with an intro and the outro music and then a track for my voiceover. I've got the ducking all set up ready. And the idea is that I just kind of, you know, arm the track here, hit record, arm the track. Of course, it's not going to work while I'm on camera. Oh, there we go. Now it's armed. And basically just kind of hit record here and record right into the uh, Galaxy Fold, the Z Fold 4. Is it Z Fold or is it just Fold 4? Whatever. The folding phone four from samsung so as i'm recording here you see it's recording and i'm going to play it back a little bit and the reasoning behind this is i just wanted a way to like i said quickly bang out podcasts be able to record it here on my phone which has a decent quality microphone and then just upload it right to spreaker which is my back end so that i keep the content flowing uh for y'all and i'm kind i think i'm just going to kind of call it kind of call it a gtr or geek therapy radio freestyle because it's just going to be what what's on my mind. They're going to be probably around 20 minutes long. Who knows? But I can record them anywhere. And I've had this template all set up. Uh, it should be no problem. I'm going to play it back at full volume through my uh, Fold 4 here. And we'll see how it kind of sounds. I mean, granted, this is not... Oh, it's crackling a little bit. That's not great. So... Whatever. The folding phone 4. <laughs> so there's some crackling there. Now... That is not an indicator necessarily of how good the microphone is in the Fold 4. There's something else going on there because I have tested it recently within the past few days and it sounds immaculate. There's no noise in the background. There's no, you, you kind of heard some static there. That's not indicative of the quality. I got to go back and kind of look at something there. What happened there is more as a Murphy's Law. Which Murphy's Law just says anything that can happen will happen. People misuse Murphy's Law. They misquote it to say any if something bad can happen, it will happen. That's not what Murphy's Law is. It's just that anything can happen will happen. Not that anything bad can happen will happen. But anyways, that is a little taste of Murphy's Law there that I go to demo you what I'm working on. And it just, for some reason, sounds kind of, <laughs> it didn't work right on camera. It got stage fright. Point is... All you need to take away from that is that I am working on a way to record more regular podcasts for you, have more regular content uh, coming out for you. Uh, other things I've I've been up to. There's been a lot of things. Um, what? There's not a lot of time in this segment. Um, I is usually I have like like a lot of tabs open in Chrome of different things I've kind of wanted to talk to you about. There's like Artemis mission. There's so much stuff going on. Oh boy, but we're running out of time here on the uh, segment, so, and on the show, yeah, working on AI project podcast for the museum, working on all sorts of stuff, oh gosh, so many things here, so many things, I I won't bore you with it right now, because we're we're just running out of time, I don't want to tease you with it, just running out of time, I've got a Ninja Atomos V for my main rig camera here so that's kind of cool i can record in pro res raw if i show so well choose uh and that's kind of it that's kind of it we're coming up on the end of geek therapy radio anyways covered a lot of ground especially with the laptop i will be producing more podcast content for y'all i promise that that i'm gonna have more regular uploads of podcasts may not be on any certain schedule so just kind of stay tuned to your app if you have a notification setting get that set up i guess if you want to other than that you are worthy of love You are worthy of giving love, and you are worthy of receiving love, and you are worthy of your own self-respect. Thank you so much for listening to Geek Therapy Radio today. Support your local hobby shops. I mean, chain stores are cool, but support your local hobby shops. Anyways, take care.